rolling, check. The teaching wasn't as good as it is today, but one of the things that I picked up on right away was that I knew Bob Pettit was the key guy. <laughs> so I was going to keep Hall of him. Famer, right? That's yeah. right. I was going to keep him happy, and but I knew what he liked to do, where he liked to get the ball, and and I thought it was easy for me to get to those areas. I, mean, I saw the floor. I knew I could get to spots, and I needed to work hard to improve things. And uh, the league got better, bigger. Uh, we got better coaching as time went on, uh, you know, but I had an opportunity to play against some great players like we talked about Bob Cousy. Right. Uh, you know, I, I can remember as a rookie stealing the ball from him <laughs> <laughs> and referee blew the whistle, you know, and I... You're not supposed to do that. Yeah, I said, I said to him, I said, you know, that was a clean steal. And he looked at me in, in all earnest and said that, uh, oh, you can't take the ball off of Bob Cousy. <laughs> After being with Seattle for one year, they fired the coach, and the general manager wanted me to be a player coach, uh, you know, and I told him, I said, you got to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, you're like a coach anyway on the floor. You run the show. You know who should have the ball. You know, you do all these things naturally. Uh, we think it would be a good idea. And he was pretty persistent about it. So eventually I relented and figured I had nothing to lose. I might as well try it and see. And, and so once I resigned to be just a player, I got traded. <laughs> And I was traded to Cleveland, where I was for a couple of years and had a great experience there as a player. And then a friend of mine who owned the Portland Trailblazers wanted me to come back and coach them. And then asked me to try it for a year, be a player coach. Got back to the playoffs. We played terrific basketball all throughout the playoffs. And we won the championship in 1979. Now, you, the same way that you had uh, learned, you passed your knowledge on. I remember watching that championship series, both of them actually, in this kind of young, red-headed black man <laughs> playing very well for you, who turned out to be Dennis Johnson. When I took over, I talked to the team about this, and I wanted to start Gus and Dennis and, and JJ and bring Fred Brown off the bench and Slick Watts. And Fred was very receptive to it, and uh, we started to have some real success. I talked to Dennis about his free throw shooting, I spent time with him, and we got him up to where he was an 80% free throw shooter. He was a fierce competitor, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to channel that. And Gus was a guy who loved to play and, and could run all day, and uh, so we utilized his speed and quickness and getting out on fast breaks. Were you excited about the prospect of coaching of Vince Carter? Yeah, it really was, yeah, because uh, I had gotten a glimpse of him the year before and uh, I thought here's a young player that is, um, you know, he's just uh, touching the surface of what he can be. And that uh, with some patience, with some guidance, with some prompting, uh, that he could be one of the most incredible players in this game. And I still believe that. Hey, now remember, George can shoot the ball, right? So if he has it, you got to be up on him, okay? Make him a dribbler. We don't, we want to rotate. If we double, we have to be in a full rotation, okay? Pick out spots now.